This is part two of the dentine practical session. In uh, part one, we discuss the dentine uh, building block, main building block, which is the dentinal tubules lying in the intertubular dentine. We discussed the shape of the curvature of these tubules and their content in details. Please remember, dentinal tubules are the building block of the enamel. Get used uh, to uh, their shape as um, this will make it easier for you to uh, identify the dentine in any histological section. Today we are going to talk about the regional uh, um, change, uh, the regional uh, zones of dentine that can be seen under microscope. And remember, in anatomy and in histology, we all will always see the structure, describe the structure, and give it a name. Na the name is all mostly uh, related to the function or shape. Sometimes it is related to the scientist who described it and discovered this structure for the first time. Just for um, a sake of uh, making an outline for this part of the uh, uh, practical session, we have to um, outline the structures we are going to talk about. So in the crown, we're going to see different layers, namely called the mantle dentine, the enterglobular dentine, the circumpalpal dentine, and the predentine. In the root, we are going to see the hyaline layer, granular layer of tome, then enterglobular dentine, circumpalpal dentine, and the predentine. As you can see here, just a very brief summary before we go into the details. The mantle dentine is the first layer of dentine seen under the dentine enamel junction. The enterglobular dentine is the globular layer that lies uh, immediately under it in the crown and in the in the root but in the root before we see the interglobular layer we will see a layer called the granular layer of tones and the circumpalpal dentine which actually forms the bulk of the dentine the predentine is the first layer of dentine that forms above the pulp uh, um, because the odontoblasts actually are lying in the pulp and the mantle dentine which we see in the crown is replaced or not replaced, but we can see, we see instead a, a layer called hyaline layer in the root. Now we'll go to the details. So what is the mantle dentine? The mantle dentine is uh, the layer of dentine that we can see under the dentine enamel junction. And it's always marked by lighter color in histological sections, as you can see here. The fibers in this uh, area are more perpendicular to the dentine enamel junction. And it's more mineralized. Remember that all the branching of the uh, dentinal tubules that happens at the end happens in this area happens in the mantle dentine area. In uh, this low magnification longitudinal section, as you can see, this is a white, very uh, uh, defined line, which is not thick, under the dentine enamel junction. This is the mantle dentine. And in special polarized light, you can see this area between the dentine and enamel, under the dentine enamel junction. As I have said, it's more mineralized and the collagen matrix uh, fibers are perpendicular in this area, which give, gives it this special uh, feature or a special uh, identification color um, under polarized light or being light in ground sections. As you can see here, it's lighter than the um, dentine below it. This picture, uh, it shouldn't be here actually. I think uh, it should be in the pre-dentine section. So we're not going to discuss it. We are only going to discuss this one. Under this uh, mantle dentine, sometimes we find these black small structures that looks like triangles. You will take in the dentinogenesis uh, lecture that the dentine mineralization happens as calcifiers. And sometimes this area between the calcifiers is not fused with all the calcifiers. It stays uncalcified. And that's what we see here in the interglobular area. So this is an area of uncalcified 
uh, interglobular areas under the mantle dentine. You can see it here. These are only uh, failure of uh, calcification in a higher magnification. These are, as you can see. And remember that the dentonal tubules, they just can go through it without any problem. Um, these are hypercalcified areas. They don't interrupt the tubule um, uh, path. More and more globules uncalcified. You can see here how the tubules, they just go through these hypercalcified globules with no interruption and no problem. Again and again, dentinal tubules passing through these hypercalcified globular areas. Remember the name, interglobular dentine. These, this slide just shows you how these uh, globules look when they start to calcify. And of course, you can see the lines of the dentinal tubules. So these were the first layers we see in the um, crown, the uh, mantle dentine and the interglobular dentine. When we go to the root, I hope now that you are familiar with the dentinal tubules shape. So now you know that you are in the dentine. You will learn after two uh, sessions that this is the cementum and these are the uh, special incremental lines of the cementum and you will be able to actually um, identify both dentine and cementum. So this is the dentine and this is the cementum and there is this layer between them that is actually clear and thin and in the lecture we discussed that the origin of it is not really uh, well known. But here we don't see mantle dentine, we see this layer that is called the hyaline layer. Under this layer we see these black areas which are actually the terminal branching of the dentinal tubules in the ground section when they are filled with air. They look black under the microscope and we call them granular layer of tone. These are not interglobular dentine because we will see in a minute how interglobular dentine could be seen in the root. They will be found here in this area and not in this area. Okay, so here we see the hyaline layer in the root and we see the granular layer of tongue which are the terminal branches of the internal tubules filled with air in terminal branching. Remember in the theoretical lecture we said that the terminal branching in the root loops. They loop and they are much much more the ones in the crown and that's why we can see them filled with air in the root but not in the crown. Another section shows the relationship between the dentine and the cementum. There's a hyaline layer here and the granular low tome layers tome beneath it. Again and again, as you can see, the granular layer of tome here. These pictures are took from your books, so you can go back and see them. Also, you can magnify them in the presentations. The circumpalpal dentine is the bulk of the dentine between the mantle dentine and what we are going to call now predentine in a few minutes. So this is the circumpalpal dentine where is the primary curvature happens, the primary dentine happens and it's uniform, there is no problem, same shape, same color and uh, there is nothing, uh, there is no changes to describe inside this dentine. The last layer that is above the pulp is actually called the predentine which is the first layer that these beautiful odontoblasts that lies in the dentine, that lie in the dentine, uh, secrete. This is the collagen matrix before it mineralizes. That's why it's lighter in color. And see here, you can see these calcifiers or uh, globules that start in calcification. And as they go towards the dentine enamel junction, they uh, continue this calcification process. So as you can see here, the same uh, uh, concept. As you can see here, these are the odontoblasts lying in the, uh, in the pulp. 
and the uh, predentine area and these globules of calcification starting the calcification process. Of course, these are the dentinal tubules after calcification. By this, we have discussed the regional uh, the regions of the uh, dentine that could, could be seen under microscope. Next part, we will talk about the structural lines that could be seen in dentine. So, uh, uh, I think the third part will be already ready uh, on the module. You can go and watch it.